there's always an adrenaline rush with being a flight nurse and my heart always beats faster during a call. Flight for Life was started in 1972. It's the first civilian helicopter EMS service in the entire country. It was based off of um, what they were doing in Vietnam and the Korean War and there had been some big incidents in Colorado where it was very difficult to extricate people that far remote and so they thought they're doing it overseas in war, why can't we do it here in this country? The helicopter is pretty much a mobile ER. So we have most of the medications that an ER has. We have an IV pump. We have a ventilator. We're able to rapid sequence patients to intubate them, and we can do all that in flight. Uh, we start IVs. In addition, we can start central lines. We can put in chest tubes, and we have all the equipment to do that. We have the monitoring equipment. We can defibrillate, shock, pace, all of that in flight. When we get a call, dispatch will call us on our next tells and let us know that we have a go. We will immediately acknowledge that go. We'll check the weather. We'll get an idea of where we're going. We'll do a walk around in the helicopter. Um, we all do that. Uh, we get in and we all do a safety briefing once we're in there and we have our seatbelts and helmets off. The pilot will do a safety briefing where we go through a brief um, verbal checklist of everything before we actually take off. And then when we take off, we all want to make sure that we've got our heads up, visors down, and we're paying attention uh, so we don't hit anything, anybody else, when we lift off the pad. Okay, walk around is good. We've got our equipment, doors are secured. Flush warning lights are out. Shoreline is disconnected. Check this complete. I'm ready when you're ready. Back. reason I've been a flight nurse so long and still love it every single day is uh, the challenges. You're always being challenged. You always have to be on your A-game. You're, you're thinking about the safety of the flight, the aircraft, where we're going, what's the weather, how far is it, do I have all my equipment. Uh, we get very minimal information on what our patient could be, so we're always thinking, what could it be, how, how would I treat that, running through guidelines and medical stuff in your head. And then once you get there, trying to take in the whole situation, trying to see everything and figuring out who's your patient, what's wrong with them, and uh, going from there.